I think by now we all know about the ongoing trade war between the United States and China. The rising tensions between these two superpowers has exasperated some of the biggest companies that depend on the trade relations between them to run their businesses effectively. One of the biggest industries that's been caught in the heat of the tension is the makers of computer chips. One of Trump's biggest campaign points for his 2016 candidacy was to punish China for intellectual property theft and curbing its technological ascent. They're taking our business. They're taking our jobs. China is wonderful, but they're getting away with murder. It's the greatest theft. One of the consequences of this was sanctions that were placed on China's biggest chip makers known as Semiconductor Manufacturing International Corporation or SMIC for short. These chips it produced are one of the most important components of the devices you use every day. Rice cookers cook rice perfectly because semiconductors control the temperature precisely. Many digital consumer products in everyday life, such as smartphones, digital cameras, televisions, washing machines, refrigerators, and LED bulbs also use semiconductors. Some of SMIC's biggest customers were American companies such as Qualcomm, Broadcom, and Texas Instruments. But in the end of 2020, as the trade war continued to intensify, the United States Department of Defense named SMIC as a company owned or controlled by the People's Liberation Army and thereby prohibited any American company or individual from investing in it. These combined with other factors has led to the global chip shortage. In this video, we will explore why you might notice the rise of price in home appliances that can be attributed to semiconductor crisis affecting 169 countries around the world. Why do automakers such as Toyota and Ford have to cut production as a result of the shortage? Why will the price of devices and appliances continue to rise? Welcome to another project. We make essay videos that simplify topics on finance, business, and marketing. Make sure to subscribe and ring the notification bells to stay updated. First, we need to understand the high cost of chip production. Thanks to a combination of market-oriented reforms in the 1980s and industry-government cooperation, Taiwan is currently a leading producer in the semiconductor industry. It is no mistake that much of the world's semiconductor chips are manufactured in Taiwan. It has earned its place as the center of electronics production. The plan and the promise were set out in 1995 to become a world-class player in high technology and secure a big slice of that lucrative global pie. Taiwan's government identified electronics, computers, telecommunications, and advanced manufacturing as the key sectors for economic development. By choice, it also committed itself to becoming a world leader in these areas. Today, Taiwan's semiconductor manufacturing company, also known as TSMC, is the world's most valuable semiconductor company. But this has come at a very high cost. Semiconductor production requires many multi-million dollar machines that can run into the billions in cost and maintenance. Estimates put the cost of building a new chip fabrication plant at over $1 billion with values as high as $3 to $4 billion not being uncommon. TSMC invested $9.3 billion in one of its wafer manufacturing facilities in Taiwan. The same company estimations suggest that their future chip fabrication plant might cost $20 billion. On top of this, manufacturers use a lot of water. This is because manufacturing the chips require the highest form of cleanliness. One speck of dust can completely ruin a semiconductor. Taiwan's entire semiconductor industry consumes 10% of the island's water. The sector is a big contributor to the island's overall economy, but it requires a lot of water to clean the wafers that go into many tech devices. Struggling to ensure supplies, the government stopped irrigating more than 7 to 4,000 hectares of farmland last year. Then the worst happened when drought struck in Taiwan, Taiwan is supposed to be one of the rainiest places in the world. It rains so often there that umbrellas are placed at subway stations and businesses for anyone to borrow. Something strange happened in the middle of the pandemic. No typhoon hit the island. And there has been little rain in the past year. Remember that Taiwan needs 63,000 tons of water a day for its semiconductor manufacturing industry. So as Taiwan plunged into its worst drought in 56 years, many of its reservoirs are at less than 20% capacity with water levels at some falling below 10%. The Taiwanese government has tried to curb the shortage by flying planes and burning chemicals to see the clouds above the reservoirs. Most of the leading fabulous semiconductor companies, such as AMD, Apple, ARM, Broadcom, Marvel, MediaTek, and NVIDIA, are customers of TSMC. 
so customers of these companies might feel the impact of the chip shortage directly in their pockets for the next two to three years. So how has this affected the home appliance industry? As a direct result of the current chip crisis, the price of larger TV models has shot up around 30% compared to last summer, according to market research company NPD. What's even more scary is that a fix is more complicated than simply ramping up production. One of the biggest Taiwanese computer makers, Asus, said that a shortage of components would mean price hikes further upstream, which would likely affect consumers. On top of that, the shortage was exasperated by the pandemic and the large influx of people who bought computers and other home appliances to ease their stay during the pandemic. Everyday people bought more computers, cell phones, and other electronic devices that contain millions of transistors built by semiconductor equipment manufacturers. The CEO of Synaptics, a company that sells integrated circuits for controlling touchscreen displays to manufacturers of consumer electronics, said that, in certain cases, we're passing those prices on to our customers, and we've heard that they're passing those increases on to their customers. Sony told analysts this week that the PlayStation 5 would remain in short supply through 2022 due to the crunch. This is why the price of PlayStation is rising two or three times the original price on sites such as eBay. Voltage regulators used in countless products that normally cost 50 cents have been selling for as much as $70. As the pandemic sparked a boom in demand for home electronics and cloud services, geopolitical tensions between the US and China continued, most notably the imposed sanctions on major Chinese consumer tech companies, including Huawei and ZTE, blocking their access to the most advanced chips and prompting them to stockpile as many as possible. So, will the global chip shortage come to an end? It's still early to predict, but according to analysts, there is some hope. The shortage may take about two to three years, but in, until then the price of these items may not be coming down. One of the industries that has also been largely affected is the automotive makers. The average modern car can have between 1,400 and 1,500 chips, some even up to 3,000. As the crisis unraveled, Ford parked thousands of unfinished vehicles at a Kentucky Speedway as the company waited for chips to finish assembling those cars. Toyota also planned to cut vehicle production worldwide by 40% in September 2021, while General Motors announced it would halt production of almost all cars at its North American plants for a week or two that same month. However, IBM CEO's Arvind Krishnan said on October 11 that any prediction of a resolution to the chip shortage by the end of 2022 is optimistic, and that he sees it more likely that the issue will not be fully solved until 2023 or 2024. The leading U.S. chipmaker, Intel, has fallen behind competitors like TSMC in Taiwan and Samsung in South Korea in recent years, but the company plans to invest heavily in an effort to regain a leading position. The U.S. government has also proposed a $50 billion stimulus for the U.S. chip industry in an effort to bolster American chipmaking capabilities. That's all we have today. Let us know in the comments. When do you think the semiconductor shortage is going to come to an end? We are always lurking in the comments for your opinions. Make sure to leave a like if you enjoyed the video. If you'd like to learn more about other failing industries, we have a playlist you can binge watch right here. Until next time.